guys black is here i was um coming back and forth with some some young guy i uh, went to his channel he don't have any video he have videos but the videos are like 11 years old 11 years old so i know damn well in some video um i don't know some some jamaican guys or whatever dancing or some crap but anyway he's gonna try to tell me that all turbocharged engines have turbo lag so i'm like apparently he been reading online he went somewhere and read online where they said turbocharged engines have turbo lag all right so he don't know you talking about he just repeating what he read he he sit up tell a lie he has some mercedes he also got a m5 and then he's talking about his friend got a f-150 eco boost and i'm like what okay if you got an m5 if you got a mercedes amg with a turbo why you got friends with f-150 f-150 those two things don't matter don't go together what i'm saying is but it's some young boy sitting up lying about what he has and what he know all right again when somebody say all turbocharged engines have turbo lag that's somebody who have driven new turbos. They have not driven newer cars with turbocharged engines because if they had, they wouldn't say that. You cannot drive a EcoBoost and say, oh, it's got turbo lag. I felt, you, you didn't feel turbo lag. You did not feel turbo lag. If you drove an EcoBoost, you did not feel turbo lag. You know, I don't remember what year it was, but some years ago when Audi came out with the 1.8 turbo, the 1.8 turbo, it had like 150 horsepower. I think it was 5,500, I think. But it had 155 pound-feet of torque at 1,000, I think it was 1,850 RPM. Think about this. A 1.8 four-cylinder turbo peaking at 1,850 RPM. If the engine peaks at 1,850 RPM, it does not have turbo lag. So you say, well, all turbocharged engines have turbo lag. Again, if it peaks at 1,850 RPM, it does not have turbo lag. Most automatic, most automatic is going to stall at least 18 to 2,000 RPM, most. A lot of them stall a little bit higher than that. So if the engines, if you're driving an automatic and the stall converter is going to stall at 2000, the engine peak at 1850, there's not going to be turbo lag. But again, people who haven't driven turbocharged, people, newer turbocharged cars, they don't know. Most, most people, and the thing is, if they've never driven a small, I mean, if they haven't driven a newer turbocharged car, they probably ain't driven the car, period. They probably ain't driven a turbo, period. Now, if somebody said they drove a Grand National and it had turbo lag, yeah, they they did. And they peaked at 2,500. If somebody drove a 280ZX turbo and said it had turbo lag, yeah, it did. If somebody drove a, a 300ZX twin turbo from like the um, 90s up to when they started making it, and they said they had turbo lag, yeah, they had turbo lag. If somebody driven an EcoBoost and said they have turbo lag, they lying. They are lying. The first EcoBoost I drove when Ford came out with the 2015 Ford Fusion, it was a 1.8 turbo, and they I'm, I'm sorry, 1.5 turbo. They said that the the 2014 was a 1.6, and I think the 2015 they dropped down to a 1.5. Well, you know what I'm like. I think the engine had 178 horsepower. So I said, man, you know what? I've got to go drive one of these things. I got to see, you know, what the engine feel like. So I went and test drove a 2015 Fusion. I think it was the um, top of the line one. It had the automatic parking. I think it had the automatic parking assist, but I, I didn't try that out. But anyway, I drove the damn car, and I was amazed at how it felt. I mean, it wasn't like super fast, but... From a light, you step on the gas, it pulled off like, not like a turbocharged car. It pulled off like a car with a 2.7 four-cylinder. That's what it felt like to me. It did not feel like a 1.5. There was no turbo lag. And I was like, I was amazed. I was amazed at that. And, you know, Ford, Ford 
F-150s with the 3.5, they had already been out. You know, they had been out since what, like 2011, I think? 2011, much 2000. I think 2011 they had been out. But I had never driven one of those. It was some years later, uh, I think in 2016, when I test drove a 3.5 EcoBoost. Because at first, I was going to buy like a 2013 a 14 EcoBoost because I couldn't afford a new truck. But then I had got a little raise at work and I was able to afford a, 2000, a, a new truck. So I bought a new 2016 F-150 with a 2.7 EcoBoost. And I, you know, before I bought it, I test drove it because I wanted to see, did it have turbo lag? Because I, at first, I just thought a 2.7 in a full size F-150, that's gotta be too small. That's got to be too small an engine. But at the same time, I knew from driving that, that um, Fusion that EcoBoost didn't have turbo lag. So I drove one and I was amazed at, at the amount of power it had. You know, and then he said that his friend, his friend had a truck just like mine in 2017 and he drove it and it wasn't that fast. And I'm like, he ain't never drove. You, anybody who drive a 2.7 F-150 EcoBoost and say, oh, it wasn't that fast, they ain't never drove one. They ain't never drove one because you can't drive a 2.7 EcoBoost and say, oh, it ain't that fast. I drove one. You ain't drove one. Quit lying. Because if you drove one, you wouldn't say it's not that fast. Man, that damn truck does 0 to 6 in less than 7 seconds. A 2.7 EcoBoost. Whether it's a four-wheel drive, photo, whatever, it does zero to six in, in less than seven seconds, okay? Less than seven seconds is not slow. But, you know, again, people who haven't driven it don't know. They just can repeat what they read online. And, like, and, it's, really, and it's like I said, it's real easy to tell the people who, who read stuff online and not drive them because they don't know any better. They say dumb stuff like, Turbo, all turbocharged car have turbo lag. Here's Dre. Y'all have a good day. Bye.